Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Karanokyo Kai movie number 4. Um, this is called The Hollow Shrine. Yes. Um, in the previous movie, that is movie number 3, uh, we got a new character, uh, Asagami Fujino. And uh, like that uh, movie was a bit darker than the other mo uh, like movies that I've seen in this franchise. But it was like uh, still no problem for me because like I've seen a lot darker stuff, uh, especially uh, like uh, like uh, j just take Fate, Fate Stay Night. Um, uh, Sakura's uh, story is like a lot darker than this. Like it's darker and disturbing more uh, than like what happened to uh, Fujino. But like I, s I can see like uh, people not like who are newcomers especially like if you are not familiar with the fate franchise and the amount of like the type of things they do in the it's quite dark in some kind of in, in in some of those stuff that they put out so like i can get it like they might get uncomfortable with this but like <laughs> like i've been dealing with this from the beginning so like it was not a problem for me and uh, like it was sad and like i like i was happy for, for one fact like i thought that F uh, fujino was going to die like they were like uh, how they were presenting her and everything like i felt as if like she was going to be dead but thankfully she is alive i think and uh, like she was taken to the hospital i hope that she's uh, like alive and well and <clears throat> Like that's the like uh, really something that uh, I was happy about because I was not expecting her to be like alive at the end of the movie. So yeah, that's one good thing. Uh, otherwise, like uh, it was kind of okay. Like, uh, but uh, I preferred the other movies, especially because of the amount of thinking we had to do. And let's see uh, what this movie brings. I don't know anything what this going to bring. And uh, like, let's see if this can like top the other two, uh, other t uh, three movies that i've already seen all right so this is hollow shrine uh this is movie number four so let's get started and i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference let's get started with the movie all right i'll be starting the countdown three two one go okay Ah. The Hollow Shrine March 1996 Okay, I like I can't remember the exact time of whatever was happening Oh, is this like after uh, Sh Shiki's like like Shiki hurting herself and ah oh, my ears? Yeah, I think so because like ambulance and stuff are being shown. Yeah. Okay, so like I'm thinking this is like the second movie chronologically. We also did not see how she like like did she stab herself or something? Yeah, I think so. Like her stomach is bleeding. We also did not don't know how she came into this position. Like intubation. I'm gonna cut your tomorrow. Massive. Yeah, it is. So she stabbed herself. She's hit in the head as well. Oh, this is that guy um, from Shiki's family. Uh, the butler, I think. Okay. Hmm, all right. The 
Damn, the music is so good. Oh, what is happening here? What? Is this symbolic to something? Like, I don't know. Okay, she's So like is she in a coma now or I think so because like they're showing her inner world or whatever that is Is she like she, she's conscious now or not? <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, she's still unconscious. Okay. What is happening here? Like, oh, after so okay, I I can answer. Is this afterwards? Like after this happens, she gets that power, like the mystic that perception. Like in the first movie, we did not see her use that power, or did we? So I think after this uh, life and death experience, she gets that she gets that power, doesn't she? Yeah, that is more like okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Damn, this looks a lot like Chicky. I think this is like some kind of symbolism like she's being unable to like I don't know okay she's ah. she's awake so
Well, you are being hospitalized. It means like. Hmm. Kudo. Oh yeah. Okay, so my guess was correct. Look, after this, she gets the death perception thing. Like after meeting with death, like after fighting with death, or like coming into contact with death. Okay. Okay, so she was a normal girl before. Like a girl with a multiple personality disorder. And after this, she kind of gets her power. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay. Damn, seeing like this scene always is extremely freaky. Oh no. Okay. Um Okay, I was not expecting that at all. Well, you have a good and a bad news. Hmm. Counselor. Okay. Well, <laughs> Mr. Popping, what the hell? Well, who doesn't? Oh, okay, who is this? Some kind of Yakuza or something? Speech therapist. Oh my god, her shift in like the personality and stuff. Fascia. Okay, um, I've heard that word before. Aphasia. What was that? I forgot. It's Miss Tiger. I just don't need to be bothered. Brain was damaged. If you don't talk. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> magician. Okay. But she is a magus, not a magician.
and she also can't like see now like like after so like she's feeling more lonely like okay like that's a bad like Oh, you should probably not. <sighs> well, you shouldn't see her yet. Okay, so like Shiki has not sh seen him after she regained consciousness. Okay, so that's also like the reason why she's feeling helpless and what the hell is that? Oh my god, this is so creepy like patrolling a hospital at night with uh, no lights damn like oh 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 okay she can send spirits as well now like oh like, these are spirits aren't they oh my god well that kind of scared me I'm coming in. What are these like? Like what's happening? Are spirits possessing her? Like <coughs> Excuse me again. My god, like Hmm. I'm very happy. Okay, Mickey is here again. Wait, what happened to the flowers? Oh, there they are. He. Wait, what? Oh, so okay, that Shiki with caps is the uh, other personality. Like she's referring to caps Shiki as him, compound individual personality. Compound. It's compound individual personality. She doesn't need to be asleep. So that's a guy, okay. Hmm. 
His name is the only thing I can remember. My heart is empty. Okay, so okay, these are not spirits, so like her personalities. Recognize herself as shaky. She'll be born by her Hmm. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, that's why like Mikia is not being like not going to see her. You just need to interact with her as you did in the past. Okay. Lost part of your memory won't return. Hmm. If he hadn't said anything, you should have disappeared. I don't know why. I didn't. Yeah. Scissors. Scissors. She wants to cut her hair or something? Yeah. Mm. Is he going to call Mikia or some? I think, like, I think she's going to call Mikia. Like Kokto. Or not. Oh well. Someone else might be here. Okay. Well, either way, she's going to bring Mikia in. Set. Raining, it's raining. Okay, it's quite dark over here. Well, his parents, her parents are here. Yeah, it is like going to freak you out if you always see lines like that. Oh. oh no, stop, yeah. She's seen death. That's the reason why she sees death now. Mystic as of death perception. Yeah. 
No, she's a Magus. Yes. Open scene. Nothing is absolutely perfect. Decides to destroy it and made from scratch. Yeah. Death for a while. The brain understands it. See death. You can touch that as well. Oh, she is gone. Oh, wait, wait. You say you don't want to die. No reason for this. Hmm. thoughts in the hospital okay oh so she's empty that is why like if you don't wake up they're going to end up going to killing you okay so they were spirits all right use protection oh okay so that was uh, her doing all right that uh, sign Spirits are coming again. Oh no, what the hell? Who the hell is this? Oh, that guy that was brought in. God damn. What is this? Some kind of zombie? Ah, she is drooling. God damn. Wait, she was kidnapped? Or wait, what? Oh no, that's his um, bedroom, okay. In short, an empty hole must be filled with something. Not with memories. Yeah.
Oh. Okay, she's regained her self. Okay, she needs a weapon as far. Oh, God, God. Oh, damn, the music kicked in. All right, what the hell? God damn, sh she can't even see and she's like... All right, is it over? Damn, the fingerprints. Wow, the details in this show. <laughs> the spiritual entities are oh okay so that's more like a vessel ten four Damn, using a cigarette as a wand, wow. And this girl is cool, like, she's... <laughs> yeah, like... Hmm. Cremation type fire or bring in a sanity. Well, Shiki can see like death lines, so she can easily like smash, smash, like slice her, slice him. It has lines, death lines. Like, what is she going to use to kill? What? She used her finger? Oh. Oh, damn. Oh great, as always zombies are annoying, like they don't die, like they're already dead, that's why. And here we go. Woo, smooth. Okay. Yeah, the hair kind of gets in the way of your fighting, like if you are a warrior or something. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it's over. Like her power is like too broken, like Oh, 
the spirits or residual thoughts oh no oh no that like oh god What is she doing? What? Like I get it that she did that to like drive the spirits away but like she stabbed herself and Like did she like stab a place where the where she did not have the line so that she does not get hurt or something like that? I don't know. She stabbed herself, didn't she? Like she's not hurt or something? will work for me okay so that's why she like mm, yeah It's pitiful too. Being hollow music and cram, yeah. Like an empty book. You can like mold yourself in whichever way you want. dream of living a happy life hmm. well there she is Something that won't disappear. Yes. Wait. Is that the end or something? Wait, that's the end? Okay, this is quite short. Oh no, there there is still some time left, like ten more minutes. So there'll be after credit scenes. Okay, like uh, this was like a good episode. I really like liked this one. Like nothing much happened, but there was there was like this was like a something that kind of like uh, shed light into whatever that happened after 
she went into coma <laughs> and one thing like uh, i was quite impressed by another thing is like uh, like i'm talking about voice actor and actresses um if you, if i've seen fred granddaughter and like i played the game uh, leonardo da vinci uh, she is like uh, voiced by maya sakamoto uh, the same Maya Sakamoto who sings a lo lot of songs for uh, Fate Grand Order, Fate series as well. So this Maya Sakamoto is the voice actress of Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, Romani, Dr. Romani, who like always stays like with uh, Vinci and stuff in the game. He is voice acted by Maya Sakamoto's real life husband. Okay, that is okay. The same thing is here as well, like um, Shiki is uh, voice acted by Maya Sakamoto and uh, Kokuto or Mikia is voice acted by his real life husband. Like this is something that I kind of found out recently and uh, that's quite cool like uh, real life couples like uh, like voice acting in like anime couples as well. Like uh, Vinci and uh, Romani are not couples by the way but still like they like always uh, are like together and kind of stuff so uh, yeah that's the thing like that's something that i re found out recently and that kind of like made me like wow okay this song is good damn like as always the songs the quality of the songs are just Oh, also, um, uh, John D. Arc, that is Lu ruler in Fate Apocrypha. She's also like voiced by Maya Sakamoto. So a lot of uh, characters have been voiced by her, like Maya Sakamoto. Oh, another thing I have to like uh, clarify here is that uh, at the first, like when I saw like uh, them, like saying that Shiki, that is the full caps Shiki, that is the Shiki which is a multiple personality. Um, <laughs> like I have to confess here, like I forgot his existence completely. Like in the uh, second movie, like he kind of came out uh, like uh, in front of Kokuto and stuff, and they kind of like went. Uh, eating I think yeah and uh, like those things happened those things completely left my mind and here I was thinking like oh they named uh, the uh, spit personality as uh, all caps Shiki uh, that's kind of cool but then I suddenly realized that oh like we already know him like sh he was in the second movie like we saw a brief glimpse of him so like uh, that's also something that like I realized later on uh, a few seconds later after like reacting like that so <laughs> that was kind of like and then i was like yeah like they have already introduced him so why the hell am i acting surprised like i f completely forgot his ex existence but now i yeah i remember the second movie what happened like sh he was like given a really less screen time so sh it kind of slipped my mind and like that portion kind of reminded me of him again but I did not know that I was a guy like I thought that the split personality was also a girl but he kind of like talked like a guy but uh, like a lot of uh, pe people in anime does that like they call him themselves Boku like Boku is uh, uh, something guys uh, boys use usually Boku or Ore and Wataishi is something like a uh, more politer form and girls usually use that but still like we see girls using that tomboyish type of speech and that's not uh, nothing uh, Unusual. Who is this? Oh, this guy. Uh, this girl. My father's friend. Who the hell is this? Kotomine? Like what? Oh, so this guy was like. Oh, 
wait a minute so f like everyone was approached by this guy oh well okay so like who is this <laughs> there's always a guy like this in the fate franchise like in the titan franchise all right okay like so this is how he lost that who the hell is this is this sword and araya okay well in other words the kire kotomine of this anime <laughs> well i was waiting for yorokobe shonen like <laughs> you know um yorokobe shonen <laughs> god damn that <laughs> this guy like uh, i can't remember like if suki may have someone like this as well i really can't remember but like in the faith like in type moon franchise like there's always this kind of guy like in freight grand order there's also another kire kotomine like uh, uh, like who is rasputin like uh, like we'll get to know it later on but in the, in the jp versions are already out so like like in every anime there is like one one of these guys like a person from the church or whatever and like a kire kotomine of the anime <laughs> damn and, and the same voice actor as well like <laughs> Like that that's a good one <laughs> okay damn okay so yeah that is the end all right so this was uh, movie number four I like this uh, movie uh, quite a bit um, because it kind of like shed light into uh, whatever that was happening and uh, uh, let's talk about this movie um, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> sorry okay so like this uh, starts off uh, like in the place where we kind of left off but one thing we do not get here is like how did she like come like like what happened to her like last we saw her like trying to stab uh, Kokuto or Mikia I'm going to refer to him as Mikia or Kokuto anyways uh, like when she was trying to stab him and uh, like then suddenly like kind of uh, like shifts the whole situation and like we see like her in a hospital bed and like we don't know like we didn't know what like how she got hurt <coughs> god damn it i'm burping um uh how she got hurt uh like as far as you can tell like she probably stabbed herself like we saw like uh, her stomach like bloody kind of thing so i'm guessing that she stabbed herself instead of coke though so like yeah that was uh, that was not shown but i'm guessing like uh, that is what happened and then we see him them like bringing her to the hospital and another thing i did not like what can i say i did not catch on previously was that in the first movie i did not catch this uh, the portion that she did not see the death lines like uh, in the first movie we saw her like seeing the death perception lines and i already knew that she has this type of power like this death perception power so like from fate grand order obviously but so that is the thing that kind of like threw me off like i thought that yeah she has been born with this or something like that like i like th there was no uh, proof that she was born with that but still i kind of like uh, took that uh, and like i kind of thought that yeah she is probably born with that or something that is inherited by her so like i did not give that matter much uh, like thought so like like in the first movie you obviously see the death perception lines uh in the second movie which is chronologically the first movie uh like they did not at all mention or like show any death perception things but i kind of like did not uh, like pay attention to that and i thought that she still had it but in this movie uh, we see that no, that is not how that worked. Like she was a normal girl, uh, not not normal girl, but uh, in like she was a normal girl with a split personality disorder. But the death perception line was not with her from the birth or from the beginning. 
so she got it here and that's why i was a little bit surprised here like uh, not surprised but the thing kind of dawned on me and i like uh, like at that time i kind of said that yeah so this is how she gets it so like i kind of realized that in this uh, movie like this is the stuff what happens if you, you already know some stuff like um, bits and parts of stuff like i already knew she has a death perception thing so like uh, like this kind of like flew under the radar like the first movie kind of flew under the radar and uh, that thing did not i did not realize that she was not seeing anything uh, at that movie so yeah i realized this in this movie that after she came into percept like uh, into uh, touch with death herself she gets this power like uh, her being like in coma and as and in a sort of pseudo death situation uh, her being in contact with that uh, death itself he gets uh, um, she gets this uh, like power like death perception and like her i kind of like um, i don't know what happened but her i kind of like changed uh, into that mystic eyes like the same mystic eyes as medusa and fate uh, fate and like uh, this <coughs> like we she gets this power here and uh, like i realized this in this episode and like i was a bit like a little bit of like when the realization dawned i was i thought that yeah like why did i uh like think that in the first movie she had it so like in first movie she uh, like in chronological i'm saying uh, the first movie she did not have it and after like getting into this accident she gets it so yeah and i am thinking that this is the second movie chronologically like uh, the first movie we saw was probably less, as a movie l at a lot later date because uh, like uh, my like from these obviously like in the first movie was a lot later chronologically i think uh, the second movie i think is the first movie in the chronological order uh, the third movie that we saw uh, Fujino, um, I think that is after this one or after like something that happens after this like there might be something in between that as well I don't know but uh, that happens after this movie like some some time after so like uh, that will probably be like the third movie is probably fourth or fifth chronologically I don't know uh, in some place like that and this movie is the second yeah Anyways, like I kind of, kind of get the uh, chronological order now, like a uh, kind of like background or a kind of sketch I can like picture in my mind now. And uh, another thing is like we see here like uh, Shiki uh, when she was like in coma, kind of like in a coma. Uh, like we see her like floating into the like light kind of thing, and there are like a lot of uh, silhouettes of Shiki uh, floating around her. Like I do not get that part clearly i'm thinking like this is like what like some type of a personality disorder like i don't know like this is probably symbolic of something like we see her like uh, opening her eyes and like her glowing and stuff and uh, the other like uh, the other shiki is also coming and kind of merging into her and then going away like i am thinking like that is the other shiki like her other personality but what were those other silhouettes i did not get that part but probably something like symbolic meaning or something like I was unable to catch that part and uh, <laughs> like then we see like um, uh, uh, Mikia coming to visit her and I think like uh, uh, her name is Toko isn't it uh, the red haired girl like uh, the Magus uh, she uh, did not let him uh, visit her because like uh, like if he visited her from the beginning like uh, here's what i think if like if mikia, mikia visited shiki uh, right after she woke up like uh, her own problems wouldn't go away like she had a great like big problem like she would like just take uh, what can i say like uh, comfort in that yeah at least one person is with me that is mikia and like her real problem she would not fight them so I think that is the reason why Mikia was not let, I mean, like not allowed to meet Shiki until and unless she fought her own demons, she fought her own uh, like uh, fight inside her and emerged victorious. Like after that, she, she, like Mikia was allowed, and I think that was the reason. Like if Mikia was like uh, uh, like uh, met her from the beginning after she woke up, 
uh, I don't think Shiki would uh, improve or like uh, not improve but Shiki would uh, clear the problems she had within herself she would just like uh, take shelter under Mikia's umbrella like this is a metaphor uh, she just take shelter under Mikia's umbrella and like the problem would uh, come back later on again and like you have to like beat the disease like you have to cure the disease after like before like uh, like taking help from someone else like you have to fight the fight yourself before uh, like asking someone for help I think it is like something like that like she did that stuff just because of that like like she had to win it herself otherwise like it would be like no use she would she would revert to that state later on and uh, like then we see excuse me uh, then we see like uh, wait a second oh god this is yeah and then we see like Ashiki like we wakes up then and uh, Mikia was obviously like not let like not allowed to meet him uh, meet her and like here's the thing like she knows that she's alone alone in the sense that her family members like they only like uh, look at uh, like what can I say like they did not do not look at Shiki as an individual but her father like as we saw before like only cares about uh, her like her becoming the family head or something like that and like stuff like these so she is like obviously like f feeling alone and lonely and Mikia was the only one who kind of like uh, broke her shell but here again we see her alone and uh, like uh, like that is one thing and after waking up if you suddenly see like lines in front of you like that's going to freak you out and you, you, you are going to think like what happened to me am I going mad or something like that is a like great emotional like kind of uh, like it will emotionally kind of break you or like uh, puzzle you so like obviously like after waking up from a uh, at, like suicide or something like no that's not a suicide yeah you can call that a suicide that uh, Shiki attempted with herself and like if you wake up and you see lines in front of you that that's going to freak, freak you out and she probably thought that yeah something's wrong with my head or my eyes so she stabbed her eyes out and uh, like she was feeling lonely obviously and like on top of that if you are unable to see like she was bandaged and stuff if you're unable to see the people in front of you that's going to make you feel more lonely like that was kind of like something that what can I say piled onto her problems and made her more miserable and we also see here like Mikia this is the first time we see Mikia like uh, uh, meeting with uh, Toko uh, and uh, after that like uh, she comes in as a counselor and then we see like uh, like in every night we see like uh, spirits or like residual thoughts as they say uh, coming inside Shiki to fill her void like they're saying that Shiki is empty so like something is going to come inside her to fill her void and uh, that's how it happened and then then I realized that yeah Shiki that is the all caps Shiki that is excuse me um, the multiple personalities Shiki was a he like I did not know that like uh, like here's like uh, that I, like uh, I always thought that he kind of like talks like a boy, but still like we all see anime characters do that often. But yeah, then we get that, and uh, she was saying here like why did he go away? Like why uh, not let me die and him taking over? I think something like that. But like as we've seen before, uh, uh, the other Shiki kind of cared for Shiki in her in his own way and so i think that uh, he probably thought it was better for him to go away or something like that i don't know but uh, yeah that's what happened and so shiki does not have this disorder now she is completely fine but uh, on in like in exchange for that he she kind of got this mystic eyes and uh, then we see like uh, the counseling sessions and stuff and after that let's see what happens um,
Oh, then well, then uh, like uh, she kind of made a seal, uh, not a seal, but uh, kind of like a barrier, so that uh, the uh, residual thoughts and spirits don't affect Shiki again. But um, that kind of like did not, what can I say? Like did not uh, act as it should have because the residual uh, thoughts of the spirits possessed another guy who was brought on the hospital. And after getting a physical body, obviously he's going to barge into your room. Uh, smash that uh, seal or whatever that was and he tried to like uh, take over Shiki and uh, <coughs> excuse me and what else just a sec uh, let me just see what's happening here Okay, so yeah, like so that that's what happened there, and like Shiki gets into that fight after that. God damn, this like uh, after like this buffering and stuff, I can't like. Just a sec. Oh yeah, and then uh, like when uh, Shiki tries to gorge out her eyes again or like do stuff like that again, uh, uh, Toko comes in and. She then understands, uh, like, I think that she kind of like got it before, but she kind of realizes that uh, Shiki has this mystic death of perception. And she kind of like says what that is to her, like explains it to her. And like, this also should have been like an explanation for me as well, because like as a viewer, like because we don't know anything about this. Like uh, in the first movie, we just see her like seeing lines and she kind of briefly explains it as far as I can remember but like nothing much more but uh, that should have also like <laughs> served as an explanation for me but like I did not need it obviously because like I've played the game and I know that so yeah like I kind of guess that is what happened because her being in contact with death for so such a long time kind of like made her familiar with death and she can see these lines now like that's a good explanation and uh, yeah like that happens and then after that uh, we see that uh, zombie kind of dude coming in and like trying to uh, take over Shiki and obviously like Shiki like she is like kind of like like her power is just too broken like she can see lines of death of anything just anything like an inanimate objects just anything you, she, she can just cut it and uh, like as uh, like they uh, kind of explained is it like uh, like uh, like open spaces in like in, in like in the uh, things like open seams and like if you slash into that the whole thing breaks down like they kind of explained it in this way but for simplicity i'm going to call them like the death lines or stuff like this so yeah and uh, like obviously like uh, who's going to win a uh, dead zombie or Shiki obviously it's Shiki because like nothing is dead in front of her like everything is alive if he can if she can see the lines and like anything can be cut even God himself as we uh, like heard before like even God himself so like yeah like this is like quite a, a OP power and Toko also like kind of tried to do something to that zombie but she was unable to do it because like it's dead and how do you kill a dead person like that's not like how this thing works like you can't kill a dead person so like uh, he, uh, even though she's powerful as far as I can see like I think she's qu quite powerful because uh, obviously she's a magus and um, she, like she was unable to do uh, anything in this situation so like yeah obviously shiki steps in and like kills the thing and after killing it here's the thing what happened after killing it the residual thoughts inside it that was possessing him came out and got inside shiki now here's like when i get a bit confused shiki stabs herself now i don't like get this portion like uh, she stabs herself and like even if like she like uh, avoided her vital parts and like just barely scratched the surface or kind of stabbed it in, like a little bit so that she can cut into the residual thoughts lines uh, so that it like goes out like it gets destroyed 
that she should have gotten hurt herself even if a little bit and here we see like her after her like taking out the, the knife like there's some kind of blue stuff like uh, I'm confused here like is that supposed to be blood like why is it blue like I, I don't get this portion like or is it something else and uh, if it is something else so what like like why is she not bleeding then like she like stabbed herself like a little blood should come out but if that is not blood that blue stuff then why is she not bleeding and like on the later day we also she see her, her like band like her throat is bandaged because of that uh, like the zombie kind of like strangling her like that portion i can get but like like is there any bandage on her chest i don't think so like so like how did like they bandaged her throat for just for strangulation but they did not uh, like bandage the wound or was it not like, like here like this is kind of confusing me like i don't know like so what did she stab or like did she like barely stab herself so like the wound was no such big deal and they did not like uh, need bandaging it or something like that like uh, like uh, that was a little bit like kind of confused me i don't know but anyways like i kind of get what they were trying to do like like she killed the residual thoughts of the spirits whatever uh, so that they don't take over her body and she becomes normal after that anyways uh, uh, after that we see like uh, like she kind of like fainting and um, brought she brought back to the hospital Mikia comes and meets her up but for the first time after she like regains consciousness and uh, like like Mikia was a bit like uh, concerned like if she is going to be able to like uh, recognize her but thank god she is like not amniac am, am, amnesiac no amni whatever like, you guys know what i'm saying i can't pronounce it well anyways uh, like her memory is fine just okay and like then we can see the credit scene and after that is an interesting little portion like here we see sword and araya coming in and like all of the people who we had fought before like that uh, like that girl who like sees uh, like uh, like who has an outer body as experience that girl um uh, asagami fujino and uh, these two so these two were like uh, given their power by sword and araya so yeah like he is trying to do something and as always <laughs> we should not <laughs> trust uh, Kire Kotomine characters in uh, especially the Type Moon franchise do not trust them <laughs> and like uh, I'm thinking that this is also like he is also some part of an organization or something like some kind of church I don't know like her like his uh, clothing kind of heavily resembled uh, Kotomine's clothing that is the church clothing like the uh, father of a church so yeah like like and there's another thing that we kind of get here is that uh, we can see here Fujino like uh, like uh, stumbling on the uh, road and then like sh like here's something that he says just a sec oh god this is like taking so much time the buffering and all like uh, Araya kind of catches her and he says, Here's it. What the hell? And also, like, we see another guy here, like, bloody and all. We have not met this guy. He'll probably come in the later movies, I think. And, uh, ah, here it is. Araya says, do you want to be healed uh, to Fujino? And then, I will, I says, I will grant it. I will cure the abnormality in your body. And then she kind of like pats, he kind of pats her in the back. And I think like he takes the power. And I'm thinking like uh, the power he takes out was 
the feeling of insensitivity which Fujino like uh, suffered from so like we see here like uh, in the uh, previous movie we saw like uh, they them explain that Fujino had already lost that power so after losing it uh, she like uh, gets hurt by the uh, bat and she feels pain for the first time and uh, like after that she like does not want to feel pain again like stuff like this like uh, no uh, she wants to feel uh, pain but also all don't do not want to feel pain like she come likes to feel pain uh, wanted to feel pain because of her being alive the sensation of being alive but at the same time he kind of she kind of like when she like she was going to be stabbed she uh, after remembering that type of pain she felt she did not want that and killed the guys so like that was kind of like a paradoxical situation like she wanted it and at the same time she did not want it but like like I am thinking like this was what happened like how she was cured like if I'm wrong be sure to uh, correct me down in the comments like uh, like at the beginning we see like when she was a child she obviously had that power like she did not she was unable to feel anything but later like we kind of like got the explanation that she lost that power that's why why uh, after like getting hit in the head and like after she was going to be stabbed she kind of freaked out and so this is the reason why like Araya like what can I say like took the powers away from her so yeah I think that is what happened so if, if I'm wrong be sure to correct down me down in the comments so this episode was nothing like uh, like no confusing pits came in the only thing that I was a little bit confused was that uh, stabbing portion like uh, I did not get was well, like was that some kind of like uh, I don't know like uh, like was that something of importance or not anyways uh, like um, I'm guessing like uh, I, I understood the thing that happened like he she cut the residual thoughts but like why was she not wounded that's my question here so anyways um, so yeah that was this movie I like this movie because like only because like it involved uh, Shiki and Kokuto and like I really wanted to know like what happened after she was like uh, she went to uh, hospitalized she was hospitalized so this uh, answered my questions and I think we're probably going to see more of uh, Sora and Aya, Araya later on like as far as I can uh, say like see like he is probably the main antagonist here so yeah we'll probably get to see him more and uh, and also that guy like the guy uh, at the ending like we whom we did not see like who had like uh, what kind of wavy hair and who was also asking her, him that who are you uh, we're probably going to see them as well so yeah so yeah guys uh, this was episode uh, movie number f uh, four <coughs> excuse me god damn it my <laughs> This is movie number four. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed my reaction, press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. And be sure to comment down below whatever you want to say, your opinions about this uh, movie. And uh, like, I'll be sure be sure to check them out. And also like uh, the thing that I like, if I have said something wrong or like misunderstood some portion, uh, uh, be sure to correct me down below. And uh, yeah so yeah that was like enjoyable uh, obviously like as i said in the pre uh, like before starting this uh, this movie i said that uh, let's see if this is like uh, tops the other movies um i'll definitely put this on top of movie number three but um yeah uh no i will put this in the second position like i really like this like now that i can think like the first movie was the best in my opinion the, after that movie this movie comes in that is movie number four then comes in uh, movie number two and then is movie number three like that is my ranking now like um, I like this movie quite a bit like we obviously because we get to see more Shiki and Mihia so yeah so yeah guys uh, thanks again for watching if you're still here and uh, yeah I'll be back with a new Karanokyokai movie in the next week so until then goodbye and have a nice day